Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode of the Doctor Who 60th Celebration Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorites, and I think it's my favorite of season one. It's called The Keys of Marinus. The Keys of Marinus is, like I said, my favorite, even though the Aztecs, which we're talking about in next episode tomorrow, is probably objectively the best, but I really, really like this one, because um, it just has like a sentimental kind of value to me, That's and also the fact that it's very enjoyable, it's energetic, especially for that era of Classic Who, when I felt it was kind of like not really energetic, and this, epi this story was transmitted over six episodes, and I really liked how they slotted the six episodes. They slotted them in really creative ways. I noticed that towards the end when the pace picked up, like, and really, really picked up, I noticed that, you know, like, each episode was its own kind of thing, which I really liked. I think it brought some more spice to sort of the formula. The plot of the story basically starts with the Doctor and the TARDIS team, Ian, Barbara, and Susan, landing on this mysterious island where they're where they encounter these weird creatures and they end up see and they end up um and they end up meeting this old guy for some reason i keep blanking on characters names but this old guy basically tells them hey you need to you know help me find my daughter my daughter was kidnapped and i need you to help like find these keys they're called the keys of marinus i wonder why basically the uh the keys are like spread out and the doctor then their basic goal was to go find all the keys like put them together to you know rescue her now they find her on the way but or so they find her on the way and i believe they still want they still want to find the keys so they continue searching for the keys they keep you know or i mean they actually well you know they keep help they keep hunting down the keys and you know that when they find them all it's actually it's actually revealed to be to be part of a super like massive weapon so they so they end up having to like you know not use the keys and it's i liked this story because it was like really ad uh, adventurous and energetic and pretty fast-paced for a six-part classic doctor who storyline <clears throat> and yeah, it was, I really, I really liked it. It was, I noticed that towards the end, as I, um, as I said, they did really creative things with it, where each episode was really its own thing. I really, really liked that. And that each episode was its own thing. And, it, but in the same way, they sort of bring their own ideas or themes to the table of the story, which I really liked because it kind of complemented it, made it feel more real, if that makes sense. And I noticed that each episode, like, even though it's kind of its own thing, it, it's still kind of built off what was left before. I know this sounds more like I'm talking about a TV show than a story, but, <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, you see my point, right? When I, um, I really liked it towards the end, I think it was episode four or five, Ian was, ended up being framed for a murder, which is actually strategically placed to make it look like he killed him. So episode four or five, or episode five, was actually some sort of, um, a courtroom drama, which I found really suited the first Doctor era of, you know, Doctor Who TV. And it was, and it was really nice. It was just tightly packed. We met a lot of new friends on the way. I know this sounds kind of sentimental, but you know what I, <laughs> but like, I really liked how, you know, we met, uh, we met some new one-off characters, which are actually really good for, for 1960s one-off characters in Doctor Who. And this story like consistently ranks like among my top five top tens like not just in season one or even like, or but like seriously speaking like even like just in the top ten of all my the doctor who stories that i've watched and trust me i've watched a lot of doctor who i've watched a lot of it a lot of it but the, but the fact that this one really the fact that this one really speaks to me on a personal level and the fact that I don't even know why, but I just find that I really like it. It brings me comfort. It's like comfort TV, you know? It's still consistently like tops, you know, like top 10. And that's, I think I've gushed about this uh, story enough. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.